Hello and welcome back to another session. Today's one is a continuation of the last session. In the last session, we saw how to host a static website in S3 using our own custom domain registered in Route 53. You can find the link of that in the description below. Today, we are going to add a few things on top of it to make our website secure and respond to requests quickly. This involves three easy steps. First, we need to create a public certificate using AWS Certificate Manager. This will allow us to access the website using HTTPS protocol. Next, we are going to create a CloudFront distribution, which will help speed up our website as it caches its content in edge locations. And finally, add or update the alias records from the previous session to point to the CloudFront distribution instead of the S3 bucket. Let's get started. Okay, so we are in the AWS console now. These are the buckets from our previous session. Before moving on with our three steps, let's quickly do one thing first. We are updating the permissions of our S3 bucket. We're going to basically remove the public access. So let's get rid of the bucket policy, which was actually enabling public access to the whole world. If we are using CloudFront, it's not required for us to have the uh, buckets publicly accessible. So let's block all the public access to the S3 bucket. So this will be our first step in our secure access setup. So this means that no one will be able to access our bucket publicly, even the get object. So this is all done. Now let's start with each of the three steps one by one. So for that, first let's get into the certificate manager and set up the certificate. So get into certificate manager and ensure that you are in North Virginia regions because at the moment AWS only supports certificates which are provisioned in North Virginia region to be used in CloudFront. So make sure that you are in North Virginia. It is very important. And then request a certificate. Let's just go with a public certificate and add the domain names. So while adding the domain names, notice that you can use the star format. So using a star format will allow all your subdomains to be accessible using this particular certificate. So it's always better to do that. So uh, using star .listen -to -learn click, you can access www as well as api.listentolearn.click or sample.listentolearn.click or anything, any subdomain for that matter. And in addition to the subdomain, we are going to add our root domain as well. So notice that we are having two domains here, one for the subdomain and another for the root domain. You can add any number of domains here. Once uh, we added that, next is to select a validation method in order to validate our certificate. So uh, you can either do it through DNS configuration or through email validation. So email validation comes into picture if you do not actually own the domain yourself. So in our case, we are owning the domain and we, we are in a position to update the DNS configuration. So let's select DNS validation and adds uh, and add a few tags. I'm just going to add a name tag for us to easily identify the certificate. So I'm just going to call it as listen to learn cert and just review all the settings basically the domain name, validation method, and the tags. It's very simple and confirm the request. So once you confirm the request, the next step is to validate the certificate. So for that, you have to add the CNAME records to Route 53. Either you can manually do that or there is an option to create record in Route 53. So AWS gives you the CNAME record that needs to be added. This is the exact record that needs to be added in Route 53. Either you can do that manually or just click on the create record in Route 53 button. This will automatically create the records for you. It's always better to do it that way in order to avoid any manual errors. And there is a warning which says that it may take up to 30 minutes. It's almost uh, immediate but in rare cases, it can take up to 30 minutes. So for each domain we requested, there is a CNAME record added. That's done. So we have our certificate in issued status. 
so uh, basically when you create the certificate it might go into pending validation in few cases but it will automatically turn to issued status in mostly 10 to 15 minutes if it that doesn't happen then you have to go and check your configurations again so this is all good so we are done with the first step of setting up the certificate next let's get into cloud friend so notice that the region switched to global because CloudFront is a global service. Now here you are going to select the origin domain. In our case, it is S3. So let's select the S3 bucket. We are going to select the root domain because that is the bucket which has our files. And origin path, let's leave it as blank. And the S3 bucket access, we are going to use origin access identity because we have blocked the public access. If you are going with public access, then we need not set up origin access identity, but we want our buckets to be secure. So let's set up OAI. As we don't have any origin access identity, we are going to create a new one and allow AWS to update the bucket policy. So what this will do is it will go and automatically update the bucket policy which is associated to the bucket. And rest of the settings can be, these can be default, but the viewer protocol policy, it's always best to select redirect HTTP to HTTPS or HTTPS only. Uh, I personally like to select HTTP to HTTPS, so if someone tries to act access it as HTTP still it will automatically redirect to HTTPS and these can be default cache settings can be default because it's by default optimized and these can be default as well and here we have the certificate selection so you have to select the certificate which we created in the first step so it will list all the ACM certificates, but your certificate has to be in US East region and only those certificates will be listed. And you can select the security policy as well. I'm just going to go with the recommended 2021 version. And the next default root object. It's important to set this because if they if someone tries to access your website with the root URL, then you will end up seeing an error message. So it's better to set a default object. And this all looks good. So let's create the distribu distribution. Okay. So notice that it's in deploying state. Okay. I forgot to set the alternate domains. Let's quickly go and correct that. Edit it. And you will see a section for setting up the alternate domains. So this is where you have to specify your custom domain names. So in our case, we have to specify two domains. One is star dot listen to learn dot click. So this is this will support all these subdomains. So for example, www dot listen to learn dot click or api dot listen to learn dot click. It's similar to what we have done for in the certificate. And another one is the root domain that is listen to learn dot click. Please be aware that you can add only the domains which are supported in your certificate here. All right, so we are just going to do with these three, these two domains, save the changes. And it is in deploying status. If you go back into distribution, you will see all the details. And it will take close to 10 to 15 minutes. So I have paused and come back into the video. And you can see that everything is enabled and our CloudFront distribution is set. So right now you should be able to access the distribution with the default domain name, but we are not interested in that. We are going to set up the Route 53. Before that, let's quickly check the S3 bucket permissions. So this is the permissions which AWS has updated itself for us. That is, it allows only CloudFront to access your bucket, the objects in the bucket, basically. So this makes our bucket secure and it's no longer publicly accessible. All right, so we have only one last step to do. That is in Route 53, we have to add our alias records. 
so select the hosted zone and in the hosted zone you can notice that there is a CNAME record added this is for our certificate AWS has added it itself when we clicked the create record button so it's just one record because both the records were similar so AWS has created only one record you can either do it via that button or you can manually create this as well now let's edit our alias records so these are the records from our last session so these are pointing to the s3 static bucket now instead we are going to make it point to a cloudfront distribution so under route traffic let's select cloudfront distribution this is our root domain so for our root domain we are going to choose the distribution first And similarly, once this is saved, we are going to do the same thing for our subdomains as well. So earlier we did it only for a single subdomain that is www.listentolearn.click. Now we are going to support all the subdomains. So star.listentolearn.click and we are going to make it point to the CloudFront distribution again. So areas to CloudFront distribution and choose the CloudFront domain. So if you haven't done the previous session, so you would be creating the records instead of editing them. And both are simple routing. That's it, so we are done with all the three steps. We should be able to access our website now. Let's give it a try. So in front of listen to learn click, we are going to just prefix it with HTTPS colon listen to learn click here you go we have a website secured and using HTTPS protocol and it was instantaneous uh, the request times are very very low and you can use any of the subdomains like www or api dot listen to learn dot click or even sample dot listen to learn dot click it will support all the subdomains and even if you try to access it through HTTP that will be our last test. It will automatically redirect it, uh, you to HTTPS. So it's always secure and it's also very, very fast. So hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.